Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you today from Waikiki Beach. This has been the best summer of, of south, south swells that I've ever experienced anywhere in my life, anywhere in the world. Uh, we've had some epic swells. There was a time here a couple weeks ago when we were getting 25, 30-foot faces here in Waikiki. But just swell after swell after swell, and I wake up this morning and look out the window, and I see perfect another perfect swell moving in. It's about you know head high out there in some cases and all this whole time this whole summer i've been rehabbing from a muscle tear that uh it that tore, tore one of my muscles loose when i was paddling my outrigger canoe and hoolied it so it's been really tough it's been like a suffering for jesus in paradise but we're really fortunate to have a friend of mine dallas carter here with with me we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today I have a, a friend of mine here, Dallas Carter, who's a Hawaiian, uh, who's, a, who's a graduate of Steubenville University and has a really active ministry here. Uh, before I bring him on the show, I just wanted to, wanted to uh, talk story a moment about why I love having Dallas, why I love having Dallas in my life. You know, um, the word culture is such a powerful word. Uh, the word culture itself has the word cult in it, which means there's a religious aspiration to every human culture, whether it's uh, it's uh, India or whether it's China or Japan or or Hawaii. There's a certain way in which God speaks to. There, there's an upward yearning in mankind uh, where we're seeking God. Um, it's Father Robert Spitzer, whose books are somewhere here behind me, talks about the upward yearning of the soul, the the, the desire for justice. You know, even a thief doesn't like anyone stealing from him. Uh, desire for truth. I mean, just just not just the truth about the bigger cosmic spiritual things, but like, how does the cigarette lighter work? You know, it's just we just humans desire truth. Uh, we desire love. Even someone who's never been loved desires love. And we and we also desire. We also have a desire for beauty. Uh, and the the beauty of the Hawaiian Islands makes people just stand still. And um, I watch people sometimes. Uh, we were watching a show recently about uh, people out in the wilderness, and uh, they're fishing and they're hunting, and they'll thank the lake, and they'll thank the river, and they'll thank the fish, and they'll thank the animal. But they, they don't know who to thank because they're atheists. As G.K. Chesterton said that one of the saddest things about being an atheist is you don't know who to thank. And there's this attitude in you when you see beauty or you experience uh uh, the, the gift of creation, you want to thank someone, but if you're an atheist, you don't know who to thank. So we have this upward desire for beauty. Even my, uh, one of my favorite people, Dr. Peter Kraft, was converted because of beauty. And then there's also something that, Dr., um, that um, Father Spitzer talks about, and that is um, just this desire to be home. And I know when I'm surfing in Waikiki at sunset, out at Pops, beautiful surf break here, and the tiki lights are being lit on the beach, and the sun is silhouetting the wave as I'm paddling out. And as it breaks, it's almost like the, the foam be looks like molten lava, that bright orange. And, the, and even you can see through the wave face, the sun sometimes, kind of a turquoise shining through the wave. I feel like there's nothing closer to home than being right here. This is my home. And yet, I know it's not my home. I have a longing for something more, and that longing for home is our desire for God. And that's what brings uh, culture. That's, what, that's why you see all these, the different pagan religions and so many others, even though some seem so bad, there seems to be an element in, of truth in all of them. They're kind of leading us uh, Godward. And, uh, but the good news is, is that there is a sort of desire of man to pursue God, but the good news is, is God is pursuing us. God, in that Garden of Eden, God said, Adam, where are you? You know, and Jesus became all, uh, all remaining all God, became totally human uh, and, and became part of his creation. So God is seeking you out. Uh, but in, your, in the culture itself, we can see God at work. And so Dallas Carter, native Hawaiian, I love you so much, brother. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that, about the element of culture. Dallas Carter is the, is the, print, is the director 
of St. Michael High School, a new high school here. He's also a catechist. He's a graduate of Steubenville. And uh, so glad to have you. Welcome, Dallas, to the show. Mahalo, Bear. Aloha mai noho makamaka. O vau o Dallas noho vau ma na one o kuu hanau ia i Hawaii makamokupuni o Oahu. Aloha, everyone. My name is Dallas, and I'm very glad to be here. I am Hawaiian. I live in Hawaii, and I live on the island of Oahu. I happen to be right now on the same island as Bear, but on the complete opposite side. He's on the South Shore. And I'm about a, a five-minute walk from the sands of the North Shore, so uh, same island, but uh, quite uh, about a about a forty-five minute um, difference. Well, in it's a, about a twenty-mile drive, twenty-mile twenty-mile difference, maybe, but forty-five, forty-hour long drive. <laughs> yep, just about. But uh, I'm glad to be here. Always a pleasure to to connect with you and to uh, talk story, to you know talk about um, our Lord, talk about the islands. Um, and you and I have similar passions when it comes to that. We both love our Lord, we both love our church, and we both love the islands. And so I'm always very grateful to be here and uh, talk story with you. Well, you know, Hawaii is the most remote place in the world. And sometimes when we're, the, the, this rock called the earth, uh, it, it seems so remote. You know, there are times when, uh, when uh, someone who is really just starting to open up to the reality of God, it seems like God is so far away. And they don't know how to reach out and make personal contact with them. What would what would you say to that person who feels like they're on an isolated rock and they need they need to reach out to God right now? You know, I I, I, I want to reflect. I'll, I'll get I'll answer that as well. But I, I I love what you were talking about. You know, just the, the 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 beauty that we have around us. And I when you were speaking about that, I, I just kept reflecting on how our Lord continues to reveal His Majesty and His awesomeness. In creation, you know, and I, I, I never stop just being in awe of some of the beautiful things. As I walked onto the campus this morning, um, we have a dragon fruit blossom, mm. and they only they only blossom around this time of year, June and July, and it's the most beautiful thing. It only lasts a day, and then it kind of wilts, but then the fruit comes behind it. And just uh, sitting there reflecting on God's beauty and God's uh, awesomeness, you know, and his majesty in that. And I think that sometimes um, when it comes to the the yearning we have in our heart, there's this desire that we have. The way that I explain it to my students is that we have this God-shaped hole in our heart that only God can fill. And I think that that yearning that we have towards him sometimes, when we don't um, have that, maybe if we, if we don't have that, that 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 grace to be able to understand what it is it's uh it's 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 quite um heavy on us because we know that there's something that we need we have Mm. this desire to communicate beyond Mm. ourselves but it can be difficult and all i can recommend to anyone who might be there is just to close your eyes and try our lord does not expect you to be a master of prayer god does not expect you to know um, the details of how to communicate with him but he knows your heart and if you just stay in silence and allow our Lord, you know, to speak to you, um, He will. And it'll come to each of us in different ways. And uh, it can be one of the most powerful experiences of your life, just remaining still. I also want to challenge people, though, especially those who have, you know, who are on a journey of faith, who have been on the journey for a while. When's the last time that instead of just talking to God, you stopped and listened to God? My wife always says that I, I'm still practicing. I, I still need to practice listening better. <laughs> and I think that I need to do that with our Lord, too, because I like to speak. I like to talk to him. I like to tell him what's on my heart. But sometimes I forget that if I ask him something, he may have an answer for me, but I've just rushed my way through it, right? And so I want to challenge all of you, whether it's this desire that you have to, to communicate with God or if you've been on that journey for a while, um, just to be silent, stand in the, the majesty of his creation, no matter where you are. I mean, even if you're not on a beautiful island like you know we are, uh, go outside and find the blossom, right? If it snows where you are, I don't know if it snows anywhere in July. I'm sure it does someplace. It did um, at my cabin you know, in Montana. <laughs> wow, there ago, you go, yeah. right? Yeah. And so s- s- sit in silence and just bask in the majesty of God's creation and allow him to speak to your heart. 
You know, uh, it, it's so beautiful too. And one of the things that happens when you when you're in that uh, place of listening. I, one time I read the the Bible through the New Testament, the Old Testament, and the New Testament again, all in a mm-hmm. six week period. And the two themes that came out to me during that kind of flash forward way of reading the scriptures, two things: the promised land of rest, learning to rest in the Lord, and then loud and clear to me the message: my people don't listen. My people don't listen. And that though, though, uh, re- said it, six weeks of going through the Bible like that, and that was what, what stood out the most to me. My people don't listen. One of the ways you can listen in prayer that I find really effective is the Jesus prayer. The, we, I learned it as a Benedictine oblate. Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's a prayer of the monks of the desert. But when you just want to listen, if you just say, Jesus... Just Jesus, Lord Jesus. I have on my wrist uh, the Jesus beads, a hundred beads that the monks of the desert used. Little, they would, they were not. That's a knotted thing I got, I got in Greece. If you just pray the name of Jesus, that'll open you up to to um, to hearing him. And, and having the Jesus beads, of course, helps because it keeps you kinesthetically present too. But just to say his name. Uh, one breath at a time. I'll say, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus. And you'll hear God's voice. Uh, we're talking with Dallas Carter. He's the director of St. Michael High School, among many other duties that he has here as a servant of the Lord, Steubenville graduate. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Commitment. Was driving between Dallas and Houston recently, listening to talk radio show host Dennis Prager. Now there's one real smart dude. I don't often listen to the radio except when traveling by car or truck in order to help the time pass. In doing so, I try to find Mr. Prager whenever I can. Always get some serious learning from that old boy. Yesterday he was asking his listeners if they thought being passionately in love was a prerequisite for a successful marriage. The conclusion was passionate love in marriage is helpful, and I might add a bit fun too, but passion, he concluded, was not the determining factor for a happy and successful marriage. I was about to call or text in my comments to Mr. Prager when a lady called in and said what I was thinking and knowing to be true. A good marriage is spelled C-O-M-M-I-T-M-E-N-T. Feelings come and go, but commitment stays. Lots to be said for commitment. Like going through a season when your spouse is irritating the stuffing out of you or you're doing the same to your spouse. It's worth waiting it out. And commitment is what carries you through the waiting. Commitment means the other's more deserving than yourself. And that'll stoke a new fire in the future. Better stuff to come. Reminds me of what the old Apostle Paul said about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He wrote, love is patient. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered and keeps no record of wrongs. Seems as though the Apostle was sort of spelling out love as C-O-M-M-I-T-M-E-N-T. This is Daniel Laboon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak.
Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everyone to go to our website, deepadventure.com. If you haven't been there a while, there's a lot of new things there for you. We have a pl special place there for the mama bears. We have the man cave, and we have the 36 months of the uh, Bears School of Manliness where you can join with other men. As once, a, once a month, we get together on a Zoom call, and we go through that month's uh, area. Like, for example, this month, in fact, today is our day when we're going to be doing a Zoom call, and we're going to be talking about uh, what it means to have a personal creed, to develop a, a personal code that you live by. Uh, but it's 36 months, and you, you don't journey it alone. It's not the Catholic way to do that. You journey with other brothers that will encourage you and challenge you and inspire you and uh, through, through sharing in our Man Cave uh, personal community site and then going through the school together. But this is what I'm really excited about. I know Dallas, is, Dallas will love this. Is the School of Manliness is also designed for fathers to take their sons through this school. So if you have a son that's 10, 11, 12, 13, or up before he's maybe even, or at, and then upwards to any age. But if you, if you have time, if it's that son that comes home and you go, hey, what'd you do in school today? Oh, nothing. What did you learn? Ah, same old, same old. You know, it's really hard to get a dialogue going. If they go to our, if you become part of the School of Manliness and you can lead your sons once a week or every other week through, through that month's curriculum, there's video there, there's audio there, there's written curriculum, there's self-assessments. So you can go through this with other men, but also then lead your sons through it. That's deepadventure.com, Bears School of Manliness. It's based on Dallas Carter's life, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas Carter, uh, someone who I really love, he's transparently in love with the Lord. I see in him just desire to serve others and to serve God, and it's, it's inspiration to me. And he's the director of St. Michael High School. We were talking about, again, about beauty, uh, Dallas. You know, there's that scripture verse uh, about, you talked about the majesty, you know, like the sunset we saw the other night. We're sitting over here by a fire pit and watching the sunset. Um, it brings to mind a scripture verse. I believe it's from the Book of Wisdom. It's the 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 among the scriptures that aren't in the old in the Old Testament in the uh, Protestant scriptures. But it says something like this: "My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal, for the chosen man is proven in the furnace." of much affliction. Another way it is, says much humiliation. But fall into the hands of God and not into the hands of man. For what man has ever trusted in God and been left forsaken? And then it says these beautiful words, these beautiful words. For as great as his majesty is, so too is his mercy. Now God is a God of justice. We've talked about that. But he's also, I've heard it said that he play, that the, the song, the symphony of justice is played out in the key of mercy. And if you look in the Old Testament, in the, in the Ark of the Covenant, uh, in there is the law of Moses, but above that law is the mercy seat. So God wants to have mercy on you. you and also, you need to have mercy on yourself. Seek God's forgiveness and then learn to forgive yourself too. Uh, tell, tell us more, uh, t speak to us more about uh, what you would say to especially these young these these men these younger men that you you're seeing them in your in your high school the things they're struggling with and how they can seek out a personal relationship with god not to give up hope you know i i think that you're you're hitting on something that's been really really you know uh, at the forefront of my mind and on my heart recently um it was just a few days ago and there was just a little bible sharing i went to and they were reading through the Gospel of John, um, I believe it was chapter 20, and it's, uh, it's the story of Thomas, Thomas the Apostle. When uh, Thomas hears that the Lord has resurrected, he says, uh-uh, nope, I will not believe it unless I can put my fingers into the wounds in his hands, you know, and, and put my hand in his side. And I think Thomas, and, and I, this is all going to come together here, I think Thomas gets uh, a really bad rap you see we call him doubting thomas but I, I think that's a really bad rap there's a few reasons yeah. number one um he wasn't the only one that doubted when mary magdalene declared that jesus was alive other the other apostles were like what are you talking about right um most mm -hmm. of the apostles if most of the apostles ran away when jesus was being crucified they denied him and so um i think he gets a bad rap when we when we call him that but you have to imagine imagine what thomas is going through Thomas, who loved our Lord so much, mm. he saw our Lord be crucified. When you hear he's alive, he's like, no way. I saw it happen. I watched him die. And so there was this despair, this sadness from what he had witnessed. Stop messing with me. I'm going through something right now. 
don't tell me that he's around, that he's alive. Okay? I, don't mess with my mind. And he said, I'm not going to believe it unless I see it. But then when the Lord appears to him, when the Lord appears to him, he drops to his knees and he says, my Lord and my God. What a beautiful declaration of faith. And there's a couple of things that need to be known about that. St. Gregory the Great said that in uh, that this moment in Scripture was ordained by God. It wasn't just something that happened. It was ordained by God because in that declaration of faith, in this narrative, our Lord brings to all of the people who read this for all of eternity, He brings healing for the doubts that we have in our heart. How powerful is that? Through Thomas's declaration, it can bring healing to the doubts that we have in, in our hearts. And I think it's such a powerful thing for us to be able to reflect on. And remember this, Thomas also, he actually went further than any other ap apostle after. He went all the way to India, um, which kind of uh, harkens back to what you were sharing about the beads that you have. I, I have a rosary bracelet on with uh, St. Kateri. Okay. Uh, Kateri oh, yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. I have yeah. I have better, though. I have the ben Benedict Exorcism Rosary on my wrist, too. Oh, nice. So nice. I'm, I'm just and, kidding. No, that, it, it, Kateri, is, she's the, the, the Native American saint, isn't she? Right, so the That's lily so, of the Mohawks. And, you, and, you, and, you're, yeah. and you're, in that sense, you're Native also. You're Native Hawaiian. I am. Yeah, so you I see am. that. I am. I'm, yeah. I'm very proud. My, I am very proud of our my heritage. My, um, uh, We just did our, just a few years ago, finished our Mo'oku Ohau, which means genealogy. And um, I we, we learned that my six times great-grandfather, so however many greats you put, you know, before that, um, it was the great chief Naihe, who was the grand um, orator for Kamehameha III. So it's in the blood to speak in my family. <laughs> and uh, uh, very, very, very grateful to, you know, honor him. And uh, as Hawaiians do, we, we try to honor our ancestors and all that we do. So I try to honor uh, my ancestors and honor my Lord in, you know, everything that I say and, and we, everything we see that so, I do. We see so many different types of Polynesian tattoos, but the Hawaiian tattoo is unique because it's the genealogy. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I probably can't show it on camera now because I'm sitting down, but I have my genealogy on my leg, mm -hmm. um, and it's done with um, it's done with albatross bone, um, and it's tapped in. If you look it up online, it's uh, quite a process. Uh, talk about uh, talk about a you know talk about an experience in manliness you know laying down for 13 hours and having somebody you know uh you uh, use a, a bone to tap into your leg is, is quite the experience but it is an honor and um i'm very very blessed to be uh to be able to have received my uh, Oha or my alaniho my, my genealogy on my leg and you see and you see though in saint thomas you know the name thomas aquinas the great the, the dumb ox they call them because he asked so many questions uh, mm -hmm. I, but, but God wants us to be inquiring. He wants us to ask questions. And if Thomas hadn't said, I, until I touch him, uh, his wounds, uh, we wouldn't have that powerful. We, it's such a powerful affirmation that Jesus wasn't a, a ghost that came, you know, came as a ghost. But that, but because Tom, we see Thomas touching him, we know that he re, he was resurrected, spirit, soul, and body. And so it's very, it's a, right. just, just so such a powerful statement. But it never came home to me like what you just shared about how he was going through this gritty time of disbelief and grief and anger and what, confusion. And don't be messing with, don't be messing with my grief right now. I, mean, I just, I, you know. Yeah. And then here, and then here's Jesus. And Paul said, if it, if 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 not for the resurrection, my preaching is 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 is. Uh, That's right. Foolishness. It's empty. It has no meaning. The resurrection. Right. What a what a powerful a statement. And and the thing is, is, is so many times in our own lives, we feel things dying. You know, we have a death of a a dream that we had, a death of a friend. Uh, maybe our career suddenly takes a detour. Remember that in in all things, God. It, it, it's so often uh, that when God calls us to something, He first helps. He calls us and then helps us to die to that, so that we know that this isn't our vision if it's resurrected we know it's god's vision and god will lead so again i just feel like the a message today of just hope don't lose hope don't don't say to god hey god what are you doing wrong that's not the way my life is supposed to go rather right. uh, fall into fall into the hands of god not into the hands of man so as great as his majesty is so to his mercy and there's another verse that says i know what i have in store for you plans for peace not destruction 
a future reserved for you full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. And then it says, if you seek me with all your heart. So it's not a kind of sort of, God, you're an optional extra, you're an accessory in life. It's you're actually saying, God, if you're real, come into my life. I need you, Jesus. I want to know you, God. We're talking, with, right. we're talking with Dallas Carter, who's someone that I love here on the islands. Dallas, how can, they, how can they people reach you? I think you need to, I know, I think you need to go speak in the Northeast in the middle of the winter like I always end up doing. <laughs> how can people not find you? In, not interested in the winter in the Northeast. <laughs> well, how, far is, how about as far as Steubenville? Where can people find you, though? There you go. Um, you, you know, so I'm, I'm uh, also the uh, president of the largest young adult ministry here in Hawaii, Catholic young adult ministry called Epic Ministry. That's E-P-I-C. It stands for Ever Present in Christ. And uh, my email address is simple. It's Dallas at EpicMinistry.net. Dallas, Dallas at EpicMinistry.net. Ministry. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach with a deep adventure moment. You know, people ask me, what does it take to paddle out in big surf? You know, 20 foot plus surf is deadly surf. What does it take to paddle out in big waves? My son Jeremiah paddled, surfed 80 foot waves. What does it take to prepare to do that? And I give them my 20, 20, 20 rule. The first thing is you should be able to paddle your surfboard for 20 miles. If you can't do that, don't paddle out in heavy surf because big surf can get bigger and you can find yourself locked outside uh, for forever for a long long time second thing is you should be able to hold your breath for the time that it takes the sun to set it's an ancient hawaiian tradition to pray the moment the sun hits the ocean until it sinks beneath it and that's about two minutes and 20 seconds if you can't do that don't paddle out in big surf the other thing is we dive down, grab a rock 20 feet deep, and then run underwater. If you can't do that, don't paddle out in big surf. But the thing is, in life, you're already out in big surf. Whether you like it or not, you are. What are you going to do to prepare? The 20, 20, 20 rule. Spend 20 minutes in prayer three times a day, or maybe spend 40 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night. But if you're a man and you're not praying an hour every day, you're in trouble. The people you love are in trouble. You should be getting up early and slaying dragons. Your children should see you pray. If you're not praying 20, 20, 20 a day, then we what we say in Hawaii when we see a guy on the beach that's wearing surf clothing, but he never goes out in big surf, we call them posers. If you're not spending an hour every day with the Lord, you're losing out. And the other thing, it's so much easier to pray for an hour a day than to pray for pray for five minutes because when you spend 30 minutes with the Lord you want to spend 40 when you spend 40 you want to spend an hour so follow the 20 20 20 rule in life spend an hour every day in prayer this is Bear Wozniak with the deepadventure.com you can gain traction in the virtues in my book deep adventure the way of heroic virtue and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to thank Sophia Publishing. I, I love those guys. I love Char Charlie McKinley there. I love Sarah Lemieux. I love all the, all the people over there that helped me with my book. Uh, they just republished my book, uh, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, which is really a gritty sort of a book, but it's a, it's a traveling through uh, 
an experience of surfing, but also of life and sharing the Carmelite uh, view of spirituality. And then my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, uh, they've come out with recently. And I'm, and I'm currently working on The Twelve Rules of Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And, uh, and so I just want to thank them. But you can go to Sophia Publishing, or you can go to Amazon.com, or you can go to DeepAdventure.com, click on my web store, and you can find find the books there. People ask me, which of those two books do you like the most? And it's like saying, well, which of your kids do you like the most? You know, they're, 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 they're beautiful. They're, they're I believe, uh, something that can really inspire you, especially the deep adventure, uh, the way of heroic virtue for men who are trying to find traction in their lives to be, to be virtuous. We're talking with Dallas Carter. He's the head of a uh, young adult ministry here, uh, Epic, and also the director of a school here in Hawaii, a high school here in Hawaii. Can we talk about the high school? By the way, Dallas is with me on, a, on an action committee. We're, we're praying hard and working hard to try to bring an EWTN radio affiliate here to Hawaii. But tell us about this, the high school. I think it's just so powerful that this is sure. happening. No, yeah, so, so out here in Waialua, we have a, a small little school, St. Michael. It's been around for uh, 78 years this year. And uh, about maybe, let's say six, about seven years ago, it was on the brink of closing. And uh, the, in fact, the bishop had granted permission to the pastor to close it if he deemed, you know, uh, fit, you know, to, to close it. And the pastor decided to give it one more year. And there was a change in some administration, and we tried to just take it in a, a unique, different direction. And one of my best friends, Kainoa Fukumoto, who's also a very, you know, important Native Hawaiian Catholic here on the island, he was asked to be principal. And as soon as I saw that, um, I had my own ministry, my own little business I was running to pay the bills. When I saw that he became principal, I said, I want to be a part of what he's doing. So I got wow. on board. And in that first year, we decided something. Listen, our school's about to close. We got one more year. We were down to like 80 students on the campus. Okay, And so that's all we had. And instead of us focusing on grades, curriculum, and all of that, we, we had, you know, a, a solid curriculum, but we decided to focus just on Jesus. What if we have adoration every week? What if instead of us just uh, sharing our feelings during religion class, we actually read the catechism? Mm. What if we do that? What if we pray the rosary every Friday morning together as a school? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Out of those 80 students, um, maybe half were Catholic, half were not. And in that first year, out of the 40, maybe, or, or so that were not Catholic, over 25 of them asked to be baptized and became Catholic. True story. Not one time did any of us, there was no, uh, you know, proselytizing. We never even brought it up. All we did was teach them the truth, and they came to the point where they sought baptism. So it ended up, you know, putting us on the map. Um, let's just fast forward a couple years later. Everyone in the community loved the school, but we realized that here on the North Shore, the closest Catholic high school, because we only go up to eighth grade, is Damien, which because of morning traffic, you're looking at an hour, 15 minute drive, hour and a half maybe, um, going up the windy road, two lanes, you know, <laughs> ha, 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 it's just too far. And we also don't have, you know, millions and millions of dollars to have a building and create a brick and mortar high school. So what we decided to do is we decided to partner with an online organization, accredited online organization that offered online, um, you know, curriculum. And we established a little high school here um, upstairs in the old convent that used to be, you know, uh, where the sisters live here at St. Michael. And uh, we have desks and a, a nice air conditioned classroom for the students to come in. But um, 90 percent of their curriculum is done online um, and uh, it's been a, a little it's been a blessing uh, last year this past uh, spring we had our first two graduates of our little high school here um, and, and now we are looking to expand we're looking forward next week we're starting on, on another semester here and uh, in essence we started this high school to honor our lord and to provide a you know a good option for the Catholic families here in the North Shore that have high school age children, it's so important, you know. And 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 so often it seems like not just the Catholic Church, but in so many other in, in the Christian world today, well, we got to dumb it down. We got to dumb down the teaching. We got to yeah. dumb down the moral teaching. We got to make it more palatable. And people don't respond to that. People flee. You know, if that's all it is, and then people aren't going to show up. But when you start really being true to the teaching of the Church, it's so gritty and and yeah. so compelling that you. I think you have a 
Um, and and I think especially young men, they want to be challenged. They don't want to be. Mm-hmm. They don't want something soft. They don't want something easy. They want to. They really want to be challenged. So there's people there right now that are homeschooling. I think it's just such an admirable thing to do that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. What can you tell us the name of the company that you're working with, or would that not be? Oh well, you know we um, so we just, we people, actually mm-hmm. yeah no sure so we actually and uh, I'll, I'll I'll save who we used to work with in lieu of this. This year we have a brand new accreditation, so we are the school that provides the online education. Oh, now. that's cool! Yeah, and, yeah, and so we're really excited about that. And um, this year I'm taking the high schoolers through uh, for theology for the first semester. We'll be reading through the Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, and uh, you know we'll be wow, analyzing that's a, that. That's a powerful book for young people to read. It's it it's is. real. It, it gets is. real. Well, now can right. people do people have to be in Hawaii to participate? No, not at all. If you go to uh, our, if you look it up on on, on Google, it's probably the easiest way because it's a, a little bit. I've of heard a of Google. I've heard of Google. Yeah, Un- Uncle Uncle Google. It's on the www um, web, right? That's the one. Um, but uh, if you look up St. Michael, uh, St. Michael School in Hawaii or St. Michael School in Waialua, then you'll find our website. And on that website, it has some details about our high school. Um, two years ago when we started, I had students not only here, but students in Maui, students in the Big Island, students in Japan, Okinawa, and Saipan. And so uh, anyone around the world can join what we're doing, and all of the information is on that website. It's so, I mean, it's so necessary. It's so necessary yeah. right now, and it, I'm so so glad that you're that you're one of the people that are doing that because I have so much regard for your commitment to Catholic teaching, mm. and uh, and your love for the Lord. We're talking with Dallas Carter. What and this name of the school is St. Michael? Is it St. Michael School or St. Michael High School? So it's St. Michael School, and because of our new accreditation, now we can call our high school St. Michael High School. St. Michael High School. Praise God. Yeah. That's, yeah, I think there's so many, you know, I've been saying this for a long time. Uh, we need for people to run for the school board. We need for people to uh, start to consider homeschooling. Or, and th- this would be mm-hmm. considered a charter school. Is it considered a charter school? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's, just a private, it's just a private high school. It's very unique. We're the only high school, um, Catholic high school, you know, in Hawaii and probably one of the few in the world that operate like we do. Um, but, you know, we also have that option for, for parents who want solid education from qualified, certified teachers, but who want to keep their children home for whatever the reason might be. Uh, we offer that as well. I'm a big believer in homeschool. Uh, all of my children were homeschooled up until about fifth grade. And um, praise God, we, didn't, we, we, we did it correctly. And when they transitioned to St. Michael, they still did very well in school. They, didn't, they weren't behind at all. They did They're everything. probably ahead. I think most... I think they get so much more personal attention. I think parents' expectations are so much higher than, you know, the, the like we talked about people dumbing down the catechism. People, they, they, they're dumbing down the curriculum in school, too. And I think a, a homeschooled mm-hmm. child is so far ahead, as long as they have opportunity to be integrated and have a commu- feeling of community yeah, with their friends. I, I, can't, I can't disagree. I can't disagree with that. I mean, it's, you're, I can't agree more. I mean, it's, it's, it's really important. And all my children grew up, all my, um, you know, because of the homeschooling, they were able to do other things, um, mm. and then also with the high school, they were able to do other things that built virtue in them. All of my children um, were competitive or are competitive in jujitsu. And you and you, oh, they uh, are really. Yep, yeah, that's um, so cool. Um, so, and you coach one of their yeah. football teams. I coach football, so my three oldest boys. I have six children, so my my three oldest boys all play football for Middleani, and I'm one of the coaches there. But all of these, I mean, talk about you know the the. Talk about manliness with the boys anyway. I can't tell you how much virtue I see being built on the football field. Yeah, like, amen. Teaching young men how to how to how to fight through adversity, through fears, through tears, through all of those and things. Teammates. They learn how to and teammates. They learn camaraderie. They they learn, you know, uh they learn um Lao Lima, which is the Hawaiian word, that idea of connectedness. They learn Kuliana, which is responsibility. Anyway, and same thing with jujitsu as well and the adversity that you learn through all of that. That's what I, I participate in. I'm competitive in jiu-jitsu. And so, you know, that's something that helps me keep, you know, the, the iron hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the thing is, I was talking with someone the other day, and they said, oh, uh, our son wants to play football. But uh, he, we told him no because he hadn't been – he was a, he's, he was a freshman in high school at the time, and he hadn't been practicing mm-hmm. up to that point. 
And I just think, gosh, it's about that time when that feeling mm. is, in a young man is stirred to take on that warriorship right. role. And I strongly encourage team sports and football in particular is, is, is uh, you know, I just remember when I was a freshman, they said, okay, whoever, we're going to do this thing called the pit. Two guys are going to get in a cage, oh, yeah. and you're going to, and whoever pushes the other guy out, that guy gets to start this weekend. I was so scared yeah. to get in that pit, you know. But, but it, it, you know, it helps develop that in men. We're talking with Dallas Carter; he's the director at St. Michael High School here, and uh, also of the Epic Young Adult Ministry. Uh, a friend of mine here in Hawaii, I, I always love to say, a Steubenville graduate, and we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus. You have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we wanted to let everybody know, if you love our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, we have uh, three seasons uh, that are up and running on EWTN. That run, I think it runs every Tuesday night on EWTN. And we're now in the process of editing our, our three seasons that we filmed here in Hawaii. If you go to deepadventure.com and become a member of the Mama Bears or the Man Cave, then you have access to all those episodes. Uh, you can power watch them whenever you want. Plus, our members uh, have now received four of the of the episodes filmed in in, here, in in Hawaii, which is still probably months away from being aired on EWTN. And so, and we appreciate it because people don't know um, that we really need uh, to be blessed and 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 for people to donate to help support that 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 TV show and the radio show. So if you become a member, we give you access to that and all of our radio shows and the three-year catechism that I went through, Ocean Sunrise Catechism, and a lot of other stuff. So go to deepadventure.com and help us out, and uh, I think you'll be blessed. We're talking with Dallas Carter. Dallas uh, is a graduate of Steubenville. He's the director of uh, St. Michael High School and also Epic Young Adult Ministries. I want to ask you about what's the status of the young, the young men that you're seeing in the young adult not not just in your ministry, but what are you seeing uh, is the need there among among the young men? You know, I think that, uh, and I can I can speak not only as a young adult minister, but also as a, a high school director too, working with high schoolers and also as a football coach working with you know uh, you know teenagers. Um, you know, Bear, I think that something that is that is often heavy on my heart is I I, I see so much brokenness, you know, in people. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we all have that. We all have brokenness in some way. And praise God for our Lord who can bring us healing to the brokenness that we have. But I think that what I see lacking in the lives of young adults and in teenagers is a lack of leadership, a lack of guidance on how to be a man, how to be a woman. They don't have that guidance. And then they look towards each other. They look to each other for oh. guidance. Mm -hmm. And then we end up with this, you know, uh, this this culture that doesn't understand objective truth, that doesn't understand you know logic really, and it creates a culture that's it's it, it that's a lie, right? It's not based on Christ. It's based on what feels right for us. It's not based on and facts. I it's not based that, on Christ. It's yeah, not based on common sense. Which which really inter interesting is the opposite of indigenous cultures, right? It's the opposite of cultures. Because cultures, even though they needed to be guided in um, some ways uh, when it came to understanding that everything they believed in their heart was direct, ought to have been directed and ended up being directed to the one true God, mm -hmm. they always sought to explain what they believe through what made the most sense. They didn't convince themselves of anything. It was very natural, right? And mm, exactly. You know, you, yes. The Ten Commandments, as it says in Scripture, St. Paul says that, you know, really, the 
the Ten Commandments are written on our hearts. Every culture in the world knows that killing is wrong, that stealing is wrong, that lying is wrong. And you cannot find me an untouched tribe or some culture that is and that is an atheistic culture. It does not, does not exist. exist. Because it's not it a not learned. It's not, not a learned. Be, yeah, it's not a learned behavior. Going back to our first no. segment, there's an upward yearning in, in us that God puts there. Right. You know, and and that you know the the, the example here in Hawaii um, of the the culture and my ancestors and how they had this beautiful ornate um, deep um, theology. It was a polytheistic theology. Um, and it's very ornate. In fact, our mythology is actually larger than Greek, the Greek mythos. So, you know, the stories of Odysseus and, uh, you know, Homer's mm-hmm. writings and everything. We have more legends that are written down and than there, even and, the and, Greek mythologies. And, and there's an arc type story, too, in, in Hawaiian uh, history. You know, there, which, there is, there is. Which goes back to the fact that because there probably really was an arc. <laughs> you know, right, people right. go, well, that's an interesting coincidence. But maybe it's because <laughs> there really was one, you know. No, and, and but I, I think that the, the, the story of the Hawaiian people was so powerful because in 18, um, in ar- around the, the, the late 1700s, King Kamehameha I met Captain Vancouver from Britain and asked him to send missionaries. And so uh, he, then that, that's the beginning of us asking for missionaries. And in 1819, uh, Kamehameha II, along with his mother, uh, Queen Ka'ahumanu, um, put an end to the old religion. And it was really interesting, Bear, because guess when the first missionaries arrived? A year later. Yeah. It was a year later. Yeah. And so what caused these people? To, and then after the missionaries came, almost overnight, the Hawaiian people, uh, you know, gave their hearts to Christ. Now, there's a couple of things that went into that. There was some rebellion, but overall, you know, their hearts were prepared for Christ. And I happen to believe Mm. that our culture and the mythos that we had was our Lord's way of bringing them to the point where they prepared their hearts. And when Christ was, you know, presented to them, they fully embraced it. It was so so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, Yeah, there was just that responsiveness when King Kamehameha II had... I think dined with his mother. That ended the the taboo or the kapu system. That's right. Suddenly there That's was no right. religion, and then and then the, the they came. Of course, but the, the challenge with the Protestant uh, evangelists that came and they came at great sacrifice. I mean, they <coughs> they sailed around. You know, sure. they didn't go. There was no Panama Canal back in those days, coming from New England. But they ended the hula. They ended the language. They no, ended the yeah. surfing. And that's the difference yeah. between uh, that. If you see Catholics go, going back to Saint Thomas in India, and I think it was I forget mm-hmm. which saint it was that went into China and Japan. Was it Ignatius? I forget. But um, but the the Catholic way uh, of sharing the gospel is to, to is to go into the culture, and and redeem the culture, not to not to not to s- suppress it. I want to ask you, you know, about it. Yeah, go ahead. So good. And I was just going to say that actually that goes all the way back to, um, you know, I, I think it was Pope Leo, but back back in like even the, the, who, the you know, the, the who, sorry. Who was the one who went to India and China and Japan and could Francis, fix clocks? Francis Xavier. And he could fix about? clocks, and that was his access. Yeah. But when he went to so, there, he went wearing the philosopher's robes or wearing the clothing that they could understand. That's right. I'm sorry. So go ahead. I appreciate you helping me. No, out. No, 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 no. That's a great story. Francis Xavier is a great example. But um, you know the. Uh, now I can't remember what I was saying. What were we talking about there? I had something <laughs> great to say. Pope man. Leo, I believe you were saying. Oh yeah, no. But even back then, when he 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 called, um, I might be getting some names wrong, but I do know for exact for a fact that it was Saint Augustine of Canterbury that he was sending out to go and to evangelize the Germanic tribes. And this is in the seventh century. And he's telling him, when you go out, do not destroy the good parts of a culture. Build upon it. Baptize the parts of the culture that are good. Right. You know, and so that is part of Catholic tradition to be able to do that. And I think that in our day and age, with some of the things we see in the news, some of the things that we see in our, our, our church news as well, I think that we sometimes build this hesitancy towards anything that doesn't look like what um, Western you know, the, Catholicism. The yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And and our our Lord did not say that every Catholic in the world needs to be, uh, you know, uh, Northeast American Catholic. Mm-hmm. We are Catholic, and Northeast American Catholics have a culture. They wear suits and ties to mass. We don't do that here because it is way too hot, 
right? Right. And, and, and our, so our priest we, here is barefoot at mass. Right. And so, so just, we, we have, but we all have different ways of honoring, of honoring our Lord. And um, I, 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 but all, all of it directed to the one true God, all of it following what our church teaches, well, let, but it's different expressions. Let me ask you one more question, because I just I sure. got out two minutes to get this in. No uncles, uncles, uncles in Hawaii. My wife sees here that there's the men, uncle, the young men, and there's a there's a there's a there's a, a company of men. The men have a, a relationship and a bond here that you don't know she does, she's not used to seeing. Tell us about how older men, speaking about these younger men in your epic ministries and in your high school, how can <coughs> men help uncle? Everyone here calls me uncle. You know, if I'm at a certain age, you know, talk talk to us just briefly about the whole uncle, how we need to do that. Sure. Men need to uncle the younger men. We got two minutes. Sorry. That's right. Yeah, no, no, no problem. So in the Hawaiian culture, there's this concept called nana ike kumu, which means to look to the source or to look to our ancestors, to look to our elders. And so it's built into, you know, our culture to seek wisdom from the older generation. And as we get older, uh, you know, even, even me, as I get older, yeah, we Uncle have Dallas. younger men. <laughs> I know I have younger um Sometimes when, when some people call me uncle, like, like what? Call it uncle. Why you call it's me easy, uncle? You know, I remember that first but, time but, too. Yeah. I know, but 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 what we're called to do is to to pass on our wisdom. It's our kuleana. It's our responsibility to pass on knowledge of our Lord, to pass on knowledge of virtue, to you know teach them what it means to be a man, what it means to be an adult, what it means to be a Catholic, you know, in the world. And it's our responsibility to do that because if we don't provide them that leadership, it goes back to what I said before: the brokenness that I see is because of the lack of leadership. They're not finding the uncles that they need. You know, to lead them on the so right men, path. So, men, we need you to step up and be an uncle uh, for 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 your for your not just for your, to father your uh, sons, but to uncle those. Even though they may have a good dad, it's it, nothing like an uncle affirming. I just lost my That's right. my uncle Larry uh, this last week, ninety seven years old, and I was talking with his my my dad's best friend too. Uh, growing up, they were they were they were brothers, of course. But uh, I was reminding with my with my cousins i remember when he taught me not to whittle pulling the knife towards me he said you know cut the other guy <laughs> he shares me but we <laughs> there my my uncle my, my uncle taught me how to how to play ukulele they taught me how to fish they taught me how to swim they taught me everything that's important they taught me la la pa'au. they taught me my culture we, we so need uncles to, have been important in my life yeah too. we need to i just challenge the men out there we need to be uncles hey go to bear go to deepadventure.com and consider joining bear school of manliness dallas we overran our time which means you're going to get another invite from me to come back on the show. I know how busy you are. I'm talking with Dallas Carter. He's the director of St. Michael High School and also of the Epic Ministry, which you really hardly got to talk about, and uh, uh, here, here in Hawaii, uh, and a Steubenville graduate. Until next week, will you do this with me? We're going to do the aloha. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dallas. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict Exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our DeepAdventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.